Welcome um, to the Cambridge BRC training theme PPI workshop. Um, my name is Justine Hill. I'm the Patient Public Involvement Lead for the NIHR Rare Diseases Translational Collaboration of, of um, Research and the, I work for the Clinical Research Facility as well. That's a little bit of a mouthful, so uh, that's where I'm based in the Rare Disease TRC. Um, so today we will look at um, what is PPI. Um, Dr. Doreen Tembo is here today, and we're very lucky to have her here. She's the research advisor and regional PPI research lead for the Research Design Service for the East of England, and uh, Mr. Andrew Sharp as well, who will be doing the master class. Um, Andrew's also a PPI lead, and he works for the RDS for Cambridge and Peterborough. Um, after that, we have we are very lucky to have our lay service users. Um, from Inspire, Mr. Brett Collard and Mr. Graham Rhodes, and I thought we'd take some Q&A sessions after, <coughs> after they've spoken because you might want to ask them some questions. Um, we cover PPI costings today, um, and that's been co-written by Dr. Paula Waddingham, and Jessica Barnes and Jessica will present that today. Um, we're going to look at PPI from a researcher's perspective and again we're lucky to have um, Dr Lydia Drumwright from the University of Cambridge who will um, give her perspective on that, how to write for funding and then we will form a panel at the end so you can uh, again ask us lots of questions. So first of all I thought it'd be useful, what is public involvement in research? So when we talk about involvement, we're talking about research being carried out with or by members of the public rather than to, about or for them. That is very important. Um, where members of the public are actively involved in the research projects and in the research organisations. Um, so we use this definition and it comes from um, the NIHR who also encourages patients and the public to be actively involved in all of the funded health and social care research. And not just as subjects, but as active partners in the research process, and I think that's really important. So here are some examples of public involvement. So working with research funders to prioritise research and identify research priorities. Some of you might be familiar with Jim, James Lind Alliance, um, and if you look the James Lind Alliance up, you'll find further information about what they do. Um, offering advice as members of a project steering advisory group. Um, commenting on and developing research materials and developing patient information leaflets. Undertaking interviews with research participants as co-applicants on research projects commenting and undertaking interviews with research participants and user and or carer researchers actually carrying out research. More information can be found at Involve, the link's there, uh, which is a national advisory group that supports um, greater public involvement in NHS public health and social care research and is part of the NIHR. So public involvement is an intrinsic part of citizenship, public accountability and transparency. Um, and I think it's really important because it's public money that's being spent. So now we come to what public involvement in research is not. So involvement is often confused with engagement and participation. Um, Researchers and others, especially organisations, you will see they use different terms to mean different things to their particular organisation. But again, we're taking the NIHR definition. So um, words such as engagement, participation, involvement are separate, different activities. However, the involvement, engagement and participation are often linked. And although they are distinct, they can complement each other. For example, the public can and do play a valuable role in advising on recruitment of patients as participants and on ways of engaging with the public. So 
So participation, just as a definition, that's where people take part in the actual research study. So they are recruited to a clinical trial and are consented into that trial. Um, other examples are completing a questionnaire, but it's actually part of the research study. So an engagement, and this is where information and knowledge about research is provided and disseminated. So again, some examples of engagement are science festivals open to the public, the debates and discussions on research, open day at research centre where members of the public are invited to find out more about the research, raising awareness um, through the media, television programmes, newspaper and social media, and dissemination to research participants, colleagues or members of the public on the findings of a study. So um, again, they can all be interchangeable, but you can see how they're a bit distinct. So good practice in PPI, mutual respect. Um, sometimes it's a bit daunting for lay members, members of the public, patients to meet the researchers. And sometimes they can be a little bit of conflict of power, so just something to bear in mind. Set expectations early, make sure you know what you're asking the lay people to do. Um, one person is quite a lonely voice, so it's good practice to have two, um, especially for mutual support for them. Um, provide adequate training and mentoring, keep people informed even if nothing's happening, because I think in the research there's quite long time lapses which can lead to lay people being a little bit bewildered about the project and what they're being asked to do. Um, and always tell people about the final outcomes, even if the project was rejected. I think this is really important. Pay lay contributions, um, put, put lay contributions on the agendas so they have a voice and pay their expenses. I thought this is quite interesting. It's quite a wordy slide, but it's the research for patient benefit view. And of all the applications that were successful, they had some elements of the following really in here. So most showed um, involvement of patients in the early development of the proposal, um, involvement of service users in designing questionnaires and topic guides, conducting interviews and focus groups, reviewing transcripts um, and preparing patient information, arrangements for participants to be informed of research findings, involvement of patient groups and charities in disseminating the findings amongst, amongst patients and service users. So if you're looking for funding for your project, they, they were the um, things that they particularly looked for and the studies that got the funding. I do like Dame Sally, Professor Dame Sally Davis, Chief Medical Officer. She's um, a real advocate for PPI. And um, she really believes that involving patients and members of the public in research can lead to better research, clearer outcomes, and faster uptake of new evidence. And she says no matter how complicated the research or how brilliant the researcher, patients and the public always offer unique and valuable insights. And their advice when designing, implementing, and evaluating research invariably makes studies more effective, more credible, and often more cost-effective. So, uh, just a quick message again, PPI should be seen as a whole business, not an add-on. Patients and members of the public should be valued, members of the research teams, and not just there as a PPI tip box.